So let's get rid of the placeholder smart material and begin putting together our own set of materials. We'll start off with the base mats. I'll go and create a folder and name this base materials. We'll just work our way up as if this was built in the real world. So the base object is made of some kind of steel. So we're just going to go ahead and make a steel folder. Let's drag it under the base material folder. And I'll just do a quick search and drag and drop um, a starter steel material from the shelf. Our second material will be a coat of paint. Again, create a folder. We'll just name it paint. And let's try looking for a plastic mat. And just pick a different color if you don't like my morning mist blue. Lastly, we'll create a dark material. So again, we'll just create a folder. We'll name it dark mat. And this time we'll manually create it. So just click the paint bucket to add a fill layer. Just make sure that it's sitting in the correct folder. To edit the fill layer properties, we can just scroll down a bit here. And if you're new to shading, the two important sliders to understand are metallic and roughness. So now looking at metallic, you want to ask yourself, is the surface metallic or non-metallic? So now if it's non-metallic, you want to pick a value of zero. If it's metallic, choose a value of one. So because this is non-metallic, we'll just leave it at zero. Now the way that you want to think about roughness is, if the surface is extremely smooth, it'll be reflective, like a mirror. Whereas if the surface is very rough, it will be less reflective, like wood. So if I want a fully smooth reflective material, I'll slide the roughness value to zero. And if I want a non-reflective material, I'll make it more to the value of one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and adjust this to something that I like. And don't worry, we're working non-destructively here. So we can always go back and forth to adjust later. And the last thing I'll do is just go to the base color and just pick something a little bit darker. All right. Now that we have three base materials set up, they're pretty much just all sitting on top of one another. So we're going to go back and use mask to place them in areas that make sense. So first, we're just going to hide the dark folder and select the paint folder. So this process that we're doing right now is something that we're going to be repeating over and over, which is to create a fill layer and then adding a black mask. So to do this, we're just going to click on the masking options up top and choose black mask. Now we can brush into the mask into areas that we want the paint to show up. Now notice that I'm painting in the mask with a light value, which will show the material. If I switch to black and start painting, I'll paint out the mask. Now the hotkey is X to switch between black and white, kind of like Photoshop. We'll go ahead and clear what we just painted by right clicking on the mask and choose clear to reset. Now painting in the mask is one of several ways that we can expose the material. Instead, we're just going to use something called Polygon Fill by enabling the icon on the left toolbar. Now the hotkey for this is the number 4 for future reference. Looking at the properties panel, we have four different fill modes. The first will allow us to select triangles, the next quads or faces, loose geometry or elements, and lastly UV islands. So we're just going to go back to face mode, get a nice side angle, and we'll press F6 for orthographic mode and just begin box selecting the top portion here. If you miss some spots, no big deal. Just swing over the camera and select those missed parts. We'll rinse and repeat the process on the dark folder. So we'll add a black mask, go to polygon fill mode, and we could click each of these faces one by one, but we could also try the UV islands this time, which seems to be giving us a better result. Now don't worry if you select it a little bit too much, just simply press X to switch between black and white and click drag on those areas to go back and forth between the two selections. So press the hotkey 1 to get a polygon fill mode. Just rotate around the model just to evaluate and fill in a few spots that I missed. So at this point, just feel free to go back to the previous mask and either just paint in or experiment with the polygon fill tool. I'm going to go back to this middle section and just mask out some of the paint to expose the steel material. For this, I'll use the UV island fill mode. Now you might be wondering when you use the island fill, how does Painter know what it's selecting? Well here I'm just exposing a little bit more steel by filling black onto the mask. Well in the UV island fill mode, Painter is essentially filling the entire UV island. Now these islands were generated from our smart UV projection that we did in lesson one. And you'll notice that these islands are a little bit random because it's based off of that quick UV project. Now if you wanted more control over the selection type, I would highly recommend you UV unwrap this by hand. You know what? Let's just change this blue to something like a banana yellow. In any case, we've got our base materials set, so now let's export as usual. 
So instead of going to the File, Export Textures, from now on I'll be using the hotkey of Control shift e to export. Painter will remember your settings each time, so it's super quick to export. Okay, so let's check out our results in Eevee. If your textures didn't reload, just make sure that your object shader is loaded in the node graph below. And as long as you have the node Wrangler add-on enabled, just hit Alt-R to reload the textures. Swing that light around a bit to see how the surface is reacting to light. I always recommend that you do a bit of work in Painter and then just do re-export just so you can reevaluate in your target renderer. That way you don't lose sight of the overall image. Cool, so we're just going to push this a little bit further by stamping on some height details in the next video.